Welcome to weather lesson number six. It's all about weather myths in Arkansas. Sort of rhymes, doesn't it? One that I don't have listed that I probably should have. It's, uh, you know, if you don't like the weather. You know what they say here in Arkansas? If you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. They say that everywhere. Except for the desert southwest. If you don't like the weather, then wait another season. That's what they say out there. Weather's always extremely changing. We've seen it here in Arkansas go from 80 to snow the next day. That happens in a lot of places. That's one weather myth. But that's not the weather myths that I've got uh, planned for this right now. And I want to thank all of you again for coming to uh, KTV Facebook page for weather lesson number six on weather myths. You can find weather lessons one, two, three, four, and five. They're already posted on the Arkansas weather blog ktv.com or you can go to the arkansasweatherblog.com arkansasweatherblog.com you can go there uh, also make sure you have downloaded the ktv weather app and the news app but for now let's do it y'all ready everybody in all right here we go i gotta hit play though on my presentation and here we go weather myths lesson number six are you ready for the number one? Or the it's not actually the number one, but just the first one that I have. Weather myth, open the windows. There's a tornado warning in effect. I remember hearing this as a kid. Uh, this was always something that uh, my parents always heard. And so whenever a tornado warning was issued, somebody was in charge of opening up the windows. That's a myth. Don't do it. When a tornado warning is issued, the first thing you need to do is take shelter. Tornado winds can blow the window open for you. It's thought that it can equalize the pressure. Let me tell you, the win if there's a tornado, it will open the window for you. When that window is open, you've created a wind tunnel. And air rushing through the house can actually be more efficient at lifting the roof off of the house. So don't go near a window. Don't open it up. The first priority you should have when you're in the path of a tornado is finding adequate shelter. And you know the drill. The interior of your home or your business put as many walls between you and the outside. Stay away from windows. So please, don't open the windows. Here's another one I hear all the time. Why do tornadoes follow the path of Interstate 30? Well, Interstate 30 is an interstate that's oriented from the southwest to the northeast and it just so happens that probably 80 or 90 percent of thunderstorms travel from the southwest to the northeast because that's a favorable track when we get severe thunderstorms with the upper level winds that's usually where they're coming from most tornado tracks or most thunderstorms therefore most uh, thunderstorms and most tornadoes travel that direction sometimes they'll go southeast uh, northwest to southeast, but that's not typical, but it happens, and it happened not too long ago in Harrisburg. But what I've got here on a map to the right, those are all the tornado tracks in Saline County uh, for the past 60 or 70 years. So you can see even near the interstate and away from the interstate, they always travel from this, not always, but most of the time, most of those tracks are from the southwest to the northeast. So, no, it has absolutely nothing to do with the interstate. Okay? You can see that interstate there. Here's another one. There was video many years ago of a tornado. It's incredible video, and you can probably find it on YouTube. But it's incredible video. A television crew uh, with an encounter with a tornado in Kansas, I think, they, they kept rolling with their camera and went to the overpass. Um, they went under the overpass up there into that little area they grabbed onto a rail and they kept rolling and that that's the last thing you want to do okay this is from our live storms media partners here jared stevenson this is video that i saved you can see all those cars lined up under that overpass uh don't do it okay that's a big no-no just imagine your finger on a garden hose all right and the water's coming out of that garden hose if you put your finger on the water flow what happens to the water it's enhanced, it sprays out further, it's more powerful, more velocity. The same concept with an overpass. The wind, it creates a wind tunnel and that overpass enhances the wind flowing through it. So they're actually stronger. 
The flow of air is enhanced, so find a sturdy shelter. Here's one that I see uh, sometimes, especially on Facebook, people will look at a radar image and say, that's an F4, that's an F5. Well, there are radar techniques that we can use nowadays uh, that can help us understand the strength of a tornado while it's happening. But it is still, even with those techniques, it is still impossible to know the strength of a tornado by just looking at it visually. If you're near a tornado, you can look at it. You cannot tell what the strength of that tornado is. You also can't look at a radar image and know the strength of it as, as well. But there are some techniques that can say, okay, it's probably EF3, EF4, that's either an EF4 or an EF5, but we don't know until the damage survey is completed. This is a radar image, by the way, and you look at this radar image on the left, and that's Carlisle. This was many years ago, by the way. That's Interstate 40 at the red line. You see Lono, Carlisle, Hazen, uh, all lined up there. And south of the interstate, you see, I mean, that's a well-defined hook echo, isn't it? Look on the right side. Those are the velocities. You have bright green and reds right next to each other. You would think, oh my goodness, that's got to be in, some people would say on Facebook, that's a strong tornado. I've seen it on Facebook. I've seen it everywhere. I've even seen meteorologists do it on TV. That's got to be a, a very powerful, strong two or three. When in actuality, you want to see a picture of it? Here it is. It was never on the ground. It's impossible to know the strength of a tornado by looking at it or looking at it on a radar. You, don't, you looked at that radar and you thought, well, that for sure is on the ground. And it wasn't. Almost, but it wasn't. All right, here's another myth. Cars are safe in tornadoes. Absolutely not. Try not to outrun a tornado. Try to find sturdy shelter. This picture from Charles Peak. There's flying debris. Even if you are a mile away from the tornado, there can be, if it hits something, it can be uh, something, there could be debris flying in the air. And look how that two by four went straight through that windshield and right into and it embedded itself into the passenger seat of that car. Again, this is a, a picture from a friend of mine, Charles Peak. He chases for the Weather Channel, uh, and I want to thank him for letting me use that picture. But that's why you should never try to outrun a tornado or get close to one with your car. Here's another one that I get a lot. Uh, that I get pictures of shelf clouds on the left, and people say, "Hey, that's a wall cloud." No. That's a shelf cloud. The one on the right, that's a wall cloud. The leading edge of a thunderstorm, you see on the left, creates elongated, right in front of, right in front of the storm, in the direction that it's heading, where the warm air collides with the cooler air inside the thunderstorm, the rain-cooled air, and creates a shelf cloud. And it's usually low-hanging, gives the presence of a wall, but it's it's a shelf. It's low-hanging and on the front end of a thunderstorm. That's not a wall cloud. That's a shelf cloud. A wall cloud on the right, this is a picture of one. That's I-35 south of Oklahoma City. I took this picture. That actually is uh, what was the very beginning stages of what was the Van Buren, Arkansas tornado back in 1996. This was during the day. It hit at night. It was a long-track supercell. But that's uh, I-35, and uh, usually the wall cloud is a lot smaller than a shelf cloud and much more low hanging. It has some rotation to it and the tornado comes out of that. The whole thing can be rotating. It's usually on the back side of a thunderstorm on the southwest end of a thunderstorm. So there's a big difference between a shelf cloud and a wall cloud. So a shelf cloud is not a wall cloud. We get that a lot. Mountains are going to protect me from tornadoes, right? How many times have we heard that? I live, I live in a valley between mountains or I live on a mountain. We don't get tornadoes here. Tornadoes are going to go wherever the thunderstorm goes. Tornadoes have been documented in every single state, including Alaska. Every single state. Very few, but they have happened. And think about the February 5th, 2008 Super Tuesday tornado. Gosh, how long ago was that? 12 years ago? That EF4 was on the ground for 122 miles, tracked from Yale County to Sharp County, and went over several mountains, went through several valleys, and was on the ground. Now, a picture that you see there on the right, you see that tornado? Do you see that snow-capped mountain? That's a tornado in the mountains of Montana. Mountains do not protect you from tornadoes. Lightning can't strike me. I've never been hit by lightning. I don't know anybody who's ever hit by lightning. 
that thunderstorm. It's not even raining. How can I be hit by lightning? Well, a lightning bolt can strike several miles away from the rain within a thunderstorm. So it can. That, you see that lightning strike that's from Jesse Hayes. That lightning strike is occurring where it's not even raining. So yeah, if you hear that thunder, you're close enough to be struck by lightning. Get indoors. There is no such thing as heat lightning. I get this a lot when you see those flashes on the horizon. This occurs a lot in the summertime uh, when you get thunderstorms uh, way off in the evening right at sunset and they're the decaying stages and there's flashes on the horizon. That's a thunderstorm. There's no such thing as heat lightning. That's actually lightning from a thunderstorm so far away that the thunder created by that lightning dissipates that sound dissipates as it gets closer. No such thing as heat lightning. So now you know. Lightning can never strike the same place twice. Again, this is another great picture from Jesse Hayes. Look at the lightning coming out of that anvil, how that storm goes straight down to the ground. It has been well documented. Lightning has struck objects several times. If I remember correctly, there was actually several years ago a uh, radio station somewhere in North Arkansas that got hit a couple times within like a week, something like that. Anyway, there are even reports of individuals who have been struck by lightning more than once and survived. So that's a myth. Lightning can strike. How about this one? It's too cold to snow. Now the big snowstorms occur when the temperatures are closer to freeze, uh, the freezing mark at 32 degrees. The warmer air the warmer the air is, and again, we're talking relatively speaking here, it can hold more moisture. The colder air, the air doesn't hold as much moisture, but the colder air will squeeze that moisture out, whatever moisture. There's always moisture in the air. Here's an example. And I took this video too. This was on a bitterly cold night in northwest Montana. Yeah, that was a bitterly cold night. And whatever moisture was in the air was getting squeezed out in the form of snow flurries and snow showers. Groundhogs can't predict the weather. I love Phil, but he's been on only right 40% of the time. It's only for fun. Now, look at this. Rachel says, I know someone who has been struck twice by lightning. See what I mean? So those are the top, do you have a, a, um, a question you want to ask of maybe something you've heard and you're wanting to know if it's true or if it's false? You can ask in the comment section. And again, all the weather lessons are on the Arkansas Weather Blog right now, ArkansasWeatherBlog.com, lessons one through five. Weather myths. I think the biggest ones I've always heard are opening up the windows and heat lightning. Those are probably some of the biggest weather myths I've heard out there. Any questions about weather myths? There will be a Facebook Live later today dealing with the thunderstorm potential down the road tomorrow night. Can a, here's a great question. Can a ring around the moon indicate snow? Well, a ring around the moon, actually, it tells you that there's actually not only snow, but there could be rain when it's too warm for it to snow. Why? Because usually preceding uh, a rain or a snow event, the high level moisture begins to increase. And so what you're seeing is the, uh, I, the moonlight refre reflecting off of the, uh, uh, the dense high cirrus clouds in a ring around the moon. So that's usually in advance of a storm system, you get those high level clouds. So yeah, there's some truth to it. Doesn't always happen, doesn't always work out. But if you see a ring around the moon, there's more than likely going to be some precipitation within the next day or two. Yeah, I heard to open the windows for my teachers. Yeah, don't do that. Stay away from the windows. Thanks, Jeffrey. Oh, this is a great one. You know, and I should have included a couple ones. How can the tornadoes sound like trains? Well, the wind rushing, it's just the way that the air rushes through the debris and it's rushing through the trees and the sound that it makes when it's on the ground grinding. But 
a lot of people say when there's like we had those those thunderstorm winds. I should have included this in weather mints, uh, but thunderstorm winds sound like a freight train sometimes. And when we had those straight line winds on Easter Sunday in southern Arkansas, people are saying it was a tornado. I heard the roar. All high winds cause a roar. They say it sounds like a freight train. All when you can get winds to, to 60, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour, or even 100 miles an hour like they were, all storms can cause the sound, the, that wind can cause the sound, but it sounds like a freight train. Also, they say, well, the, the trees were twisted, so it must have been a tornado. No, it's been proven that straight line winds can twist trees because trees are not symmetrical in their foliage, their leaves. So when they fall, they can twist. The wind will push them over and then they twist because they're not symmetrical. Maybe they're lopsided with the root system more so on one side of the tree than the other. So they can twist when they're falling over. Sometimes a tree can fall on another tree, causing that tree to fall in a different direction. Those are all straight line winds. And those are the things that the National Weather Service goes out and looks at when they do the surveys. So no, twisted trees are not an indication that it was a tornado. It could have been straight line wind. Now, if you see the trees pointing, all the trees pointing in different directions, that can be an indication. All right. A lot of information. Some of these were real myths. Some of them were just, what? Persimmonsies can predict the winter. Uh, spoons. That's what they say. Well, I'm hoping, that's what they say is that spoons, when you open up persimmon seed spoons, should throw a harsh winter. We've had spoons the past two winters, and I think we know how the past two winters have turned out. Here's a great question. How do you distinguish a microburst from a tornado on radar? Well, to distinguish the two, you have to know where the radar is located, the radar that you're looking at the data from. Remember, when you're looking at radar and the greens, I think I can pull it up here. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. Let me pull it up here. There it is. So in this, uh, I showed you a little while ago, uh, the radar is in North Little Rock. The greens indicate motion towards the radar, reds away from the radar, okay? So that would give you a counterclockwise circulation. So you have to know where the radar is. Greens towards the radar, that's motion towards the radar, velocity towards the radar, reds away from the radar. Plus you can see on the left, that's a hook echo, all right? Usually your straight line winds are gonna occur out here, away from that hook echo, and the winds are going away from each other. So you have bright reds and bright greens, uh, and it would be, it's not, counterclockwise motion, but the motion of the air is away um, from a central point, I guess. It's not a, a couplet on the radar where it's the two pixels are, are right next to each other. Hope that best explains it. All right. Any other questions? It's my son watching on my wife's account. Glad they're learning something. All right. I'm going to get ready here for Good Afternoon Arkansas at 3 o'clock. And I want to thank you very much for coming to the KATV Facebook page and for watching all these weather lessons. I hope you learned a few things here about weather myths, about some of the do's and don'ts in severe weather. Uh, I think the biggest ones, again, uh, the opening the windows, the tornadoes traveling, I-30, definitely one of, the, one of the big ones that I hear, uh, and the heat lightning. So I hope that uh, you can spread that knowledge as well to your friends and your family. And when everybody can get, get, get together again safely soon, uh, you can share your knowledge, your newfound weather knowledge. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for trusting us here at Channel 7, the team with the most experience.